All right, so first thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about cameras. So here on the screen, I'm sure many of you recognize this camera. It's the Nimslo. It came out in the early 80s. This particular camera I purchased in the early 80s when they're brand new. I probably paid, you know, $250 for this. And so it's a 35 millimeter point and shoot camera, four lenses. The interocular is basically the distance of the, the human eyes, the outer interocular. And when you would uh, use this Nimslo camera, you'd load it with 35 millimeter film. It would take two full frames, and that width, it would actually make four half frame images in uh, vertical portrait orientation. You'd send your film away for processing, and you'd get little pictures like this. Uh, these haven't really withstood the test of time very well. There's a little light fade. But uh, what I bring, the reason I bring this up is you can make your own Nimslo prints. If you have a Nimslo camera, it's so hard for me to work backwards like, <laughs> like this plug in. If you have your own Nimslo camera, you, know, you can make your prints. Now I'm going to rotate this. They don't have tremendous parallax. There are ways for compensating for that as well. So any of you that purchased a Nimslo years ago, if you want to make prints from them, you can do it. It's not as inexpensive as when the cameras first came out because, of course, you have to get the lenticular sheets and the software and so forth. But like most types of photography, you know, you take hundreds of images, thousands of images. I'm sure we all have perhaps tens of thousands of images, but there are only certain ones that are wall worthy or that you might want to share with someone, and those would be the ones to print yourself. So Nimslo, analog camera system, the depth from this camera was not tremendous. It actually, that, when I look at a, a picture like this, you know, maybe it has a half inch of depth in front of it and a half inch behind it. So not, not really perfect. And one of the reasons for that is the stereo base. So I'm just going to call up this picture. So this camera is called the Birdlow. It's a handmade camera by David Birdler, Birder <laughs> in London. And he would take Nimslows, cut them apart, splice them together. And he had some cameras with two Nimslows, three Nimslows in this example, and one that even had four Nimslows. And by doing that, he was able to get this wider stereo base. And that provides more depth in the 3D photographs. So the Nimslow, by its design limitations, because it had to use 35 millimeter film, be economical. You know, they, they had a small number of lens. They had them close together. So we're going to take the Nimslo off. And I'm going to see if I can do this. A lot of controls on the back end here, sorry. <laughs> Now I'm going to come over here and put up a different camera system. All right, back that up a bit. Lower that. So this, in essence, is a digital Nimslo. It's uh, four cameras. These are Sony RX0 uh, Mark IIs. Uh, they can be fired via USB. There's a box below here. This is called the Esper Trigger Box. And this box will actually allow you to sync up to six cameras. Now, years ago, I was actually using Canon point-and-shoot cameras and Stereo Data Maker to sync those uh, uh, simultaneously. But I was always frustrated with the particular Canons I used because they didn't provide RAW files. And they also had a lens that was more of a, a, a normal lens. It had a 40 millimeter equivalent lens. For my 3D, I like more of a wide-angle view. So these Sonys uh, provide RAW files, and they actually have a wide-angle lens array. So that's pretty nice. Now this Esper box, uh, it's, it's bigger than the cameras, right? It has to be powered, and so I actually take a little USB battery that's taped to the tripod, and I plug that in. And then I actually fire the camera you know, with a little handheld remote. So if I press the button halfway, it locks in the focus. I press it the rest of the way and it takes the picture. And so now you can use this type of camera or a Nimslo to make wiggle GIFs, or you can use this type of camera to make lenticular prints. I'm going to rotate this around a little bit. This side, you can see the ports that you plug the cameras into. I'm using four of the ports because I have four cameras. This side over here, 
you can see the power going in under that uh, S per trigger uh, label, and then you can see the input for the remote control. There's a port not being used called link, and what that lets you do is connect multiple of these boxes in serial. So let's say you had a system that had 24 cameras. Each box uses six cameras. You could take four of these boxes and link them to all those cameras. Obviously, it wouldn't be very portable. It would be more of a, a studio application. And if I turn this around the back end, you can see the uh, USB cables that are plugged into the camera. One of these uh, cameras, I actually put a little tab tape here so I can take that viewfinder you know, and adjust it up and down, pull it out to get a, a little better view. So this is a uh, multi-camera array that will let me take four pictures simultaneously. So it's great for moving subjects. If by chance you make it to my website and go to the social media links on the Instagram link, I actually have wiggle GIFs made with this cameras. And one of them is a, a fountain with water splashing everywhere and you can see the great sink. There's always been a debate on these Sony cameras. You know, people say they have perfect sync. And people then say, well, what is perfect sync? And I don't know the answer to that question, but I do know that for my purposes, people, splashing water, things of that nature, the sync is just fine. If you want to photograph bullets in flight, it might be a completely different animal. Uh, I should mention one last thing. It's a tiny technical detail, but might like it. When this is powered on, there's a little light on the side here that turns green, just like that. It's a button, and I can make that light go blue. And when you do that, it allows you to use software to program this box. So you could introduce a delay between different cameras, or you could introduce a delay if you wanted to fire an electronic flash unit. So it allows you to control each of these individually. Obviously, for 3D work, we want them all to fire simultaneously. But if you're a creative and want to do some sort of animation, you could have you know, one camera fire perhaps a millisecond after the other and so forth. So a little additional feature of that box. Now, I'm all tw twisted up here, just a second. So the NIMS Low and the Sony multi-camera array are great for photographing things that move. There's a lot of 3D you, photography you can do of things that don't move. And one approach to take is to use a, a slider, like a video slider. I think you've all seen them. They might be a, a one meter long bar. You put your camera on that and you slide the camera from one side to the other. Um, it would look something like this. So this particular one doesn't have a, a head on it yet, but you can see slides across. For 3D lenticular, you generally want a wider stereo base than you would use for a stereo pair. Typically, you're looking at uh, 3 to 6x the stereo base if you're using a, a 3D lenticular sheet. And if you're doing animations, you want somewhere between 6 and 12x the stereo base. So animations, what's that all about? I'll just, I'll just hold up one real qu quick. So this picture is three-dimensional, but as I rotate it, you can see this woman brings her finger up, says, Shh, be quiet, and holds the book. So you get both 3D and motion. This is approximately 100 photographs in that. So the next little gizmo I want to share with you is this device here. So what this is, is a video slider, but the mechanics of it are different than what we just had. I'm a little constrained here due to my, my headset. So this is called the Edelkrone Wing, and I'm just going to show you. It slides here, and it slides there. It actually has 40 centimeters of travel, so about uh, 15 and a half inches. So what's nice about this is it's very portable. You can put, you know, in this case I have, you know, this little miniature Sony camera, Edelcombe wing, they could go in a very tiny camera bag along with a portable tripod. So it's very nice to use. 
uh, some great advancements in the past few years with cameras. Now this is just, you know, the Sony RX100 is a point and shoot camera. This has great burst depth. If I hold down the shutter button and slide it across, it actually does 20 frames a second. So, in, and it has a burst depth of 70 frames. So in just a few seconds, I can take 70 pictures and it's uh, just terrific. Something that would have been unimaginable, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. So I've showed you some camera equipment. I've talked about some resources. I guess what I'd like to do now is open it up to any question 